Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail back with more Kerbal Space Program Career Mode. Where today I'm going to be doing the most ambitious mission I've done yet, which is going to be a flight to Minmus to try and land, and then fly by the moon as well to rack up some good science here. You can see the tech tree. I've had some success so far, but there's a few things I really want. I finally got a battery that's going to be key for research. But now I'm building a ship that is designed to go to Minmus to land and then to fly to the moon and at least fly by there. Now I have struts, which are gonna be really helpful for keeping things together. And you can see I had some problems with multi-pronging or multi-putting on struts at the same time, but I do have some science experiments that I'll be able to run. With the Minmus Navigator, and this is just going to be a one ship flight. You can see I have four big rockets that are all gonna disperse, and then I have the one tiny rocket that's gonna carry me the rest of the way. Now, for those of you who are wondering why land on Minmus instead of the moon, Minmus is actually much easier to land on than the moon. The only real downside, as I do some experiments here, is that you have to know how to angle your orbit to get over there. As I make gravity turn a little late, but that's okay. My apoapsis is going up just fine. Min but as I said, Minmus has much lower gravity than the moon. And as you'll see here, that makes landing on it much easier, especially since I have tiny little stick legs. Now, I am going to be doing a landing mission to the moon as well. And if you saw my prior career mode series, I told you up front that I would be actually jumping a little bit instead of trying to do a complete progression here. Now my goal is to actually have the exploration of this area of the local Kerbal system done before, or the Kerbin system done before I move on to other planets like Duna or Eve. But right now, part of that mission involves going to Minmus and I'm not just probing it this time. I'm not starting with a probe, I'm actually doing a burn to fly to Minmus as we see the moon over there. I've adjusted my orbit trajectory a little bit by this time, but Minmus is actually coming in a pretty good position where I should be able to meet it pretty fast with a mid-course correction. I'm good on fuel. It doesn't look like I have a ton of fuel, but it doesn't actually take a lot to get back as I accidentally hit a moon encounter there. Freaked me out for a second, but no, we're just flying by the moon as I watch my apps go very slowly and we're just gonna go on by, do some upper atmosphere observations, not too much to it as Jebediah is flying here is gonna warp ahead to Minmus because all we gotta do is fly at this point. Get a few more experiments over Minmus, which Minmus at this point doesn't have multiple regions like Kerbin or the moon, as you can see both of them to the right there in that image, which is pretty nice. Instead, right now it's just above Minmus, on Minmus's surface, or just in the local space. So there's not nearly as many places to do that, but I'm circularizing my orbit. I'm getting over some of the mundane details here. See, we're in space near Minmus now, so I get to keep some of these things. And these experiments, they're going to be trying to come home with me at least a little bit. And I do try and transmit some. You do lose a lot of science from it, but I do show here in part because I want to show, and I don't know why this is going super, super fast, but this is how low my orbit is. I'm 5,000 meters apparently in altitude here, but I could potentially land on any of those mountain crags, but I wanted to do a daytime landing in the lake. So like I said, this does jump a little bit. You have, if you've watched my videos before, you've seen Minmus, but we're going to be kind of watching the meat and potatoes here as Jebediah, very happy, very excited about being the first possible Kerbal to land on a foreign body in forever. I mean, I'm not sure whether the question for the space program is, did there used to be a space program and then they stopped from budget concerns or some war that destroyed most of the Kerbal population to the point where there's only a space center left? Is everybody forced to go underground? Are we fighting for resources? Are we kind of in a uh, time machine world where the beasts below are destroying the creatures above? Don't know, but right now Jebediah is currently holding the hopes of Kerbal society's space exploration in the future here. As he gets to Minmus, a land that has been noted as looking kind of like candy or pudding or otherwise very tasty, but I promise you, it's not very tasty. But the nice thing here, as I said, these flat planes are actually flat and sea level, so it's really easy to land them, first off. And then the gravity being so low, if you screw up, it's pretty easy to fix. But I do take it pretty slow here. The nice sunrise gives a good shadow for comparison, and we're just going to drop, and there we go. Jebediah is on the planet. He has touched down. Oh, happy day. Going to transmit a report here. Now I have batteries and I don't have solar panels yet. That is going to be one of my next upgrades. But right now we're going to EVA. And one of the nice things about Minmus is his low gravity is that I don't have ladders, but I can still jump there, jump back into my bin if needed or my command pod if needed without 
using the RCS boosters because I suck with RCS. It's something I'm still trying to learn how to do, but let's see here. Just playing with the materials bay, just trying to get things together. 125 science, that's good to hold on to instead of sending. Uh, it's Minimus looks like a mint desert and discovered, but it makes you hungry, but it's not really great for eating. So I'm going to send some of the materials or some of the data's home, get rid of some of them, just see what I can keep here, because you do get more science generally for stuff that's on the surface, and you, when you transmit it, that 40% is kind of like some decay. So while I will be sending probes to places later, it's not because the game lets you get unlimited science by orbiting probes around things, like maybe in real life where you have, okay, there's an EVA report, but it's in space above Minmus or near Minmus. So there's above and near Minmus, and I'm only eight meters up, so that's gonna have to change. But as I was saying before, in real life, there's plenty of missions that'll go on. Even the Voyager mission that was launched so long ago is still getting objectives, still getting things sent to it, or still getting requests as it's observing outside of the uh, local sun region of space. But here we go. Minmus' surface, probably not edible. Well, that's good to know. And I'm not sure if there is a different EVA report for the non-flat lakes. There might be, there might not be. But the most important thing for Jeb right now is to plant a flag. And what is he going to say? As there's the little symbol icon going there. I think it's just going to be pretty simple because this is Jeb. Boom. First landing. Because it's Jeb. He's not... He's serious about his flying, but he's not too serious. So, Tasty Lake with an EY. There we go. With an A. Tasty. Tasty. I don't know. But there is Jeb. He is super happy about this, and I don't think, I think along this time I realize afterwards that, hey, I should probably actually do an EVA report from the ground, because 8 meters is not considered the ground, unlike other places there. But Jeb is so happy. The sky is so pretty, and that is him jumping. Can he jump higher than the rocket? Yes, he can. That is min is low gravity. That means you need actually less fuel to push out. That means you need to use less resources to get going. And the tiny legs aren't nearly as going to get crushed here. So I do have an EVA report that I'm going to fix. I'm not sure if it's on the video. I had to do a little bit of editing here just to make things simpler. But now that, that mission's over, it's on to phase two, which is just Jeb as soon as he can jump in. Is this it? I turn on the RCS and grab and miss and grab. And there we go. And all at once... And that's where I realized, wait, can't store experiments because 8 meters up, apparently, is in near space. Because Minmus, like the moon, has no atmosphere. It's easier not because of atmosphere drag, it's easier. Uh, there we go. So this is where I realized my mistake. And maybe I should have just done an EVA report and saved it there, but I fix it in some way, shape, or form. And we're going to see here, it's just funny to watch the meter thing tick down, and the gravity is so low. There's other moons in this game, other, like other moons in real life, that if you even jump, you could possibly hit escape velocity. Gilly around Eve is an example of that, I believe. Uh, kind of like around Mars, as I'm now my luck for getting the command pods out. Mars is two moons, which are really more like captured asteroids than moons, and they're in ir highly irregular orbits. And this is Mars real life, not Duna have very, very, very like scary low gravity wells to the point where if you do the wrong thing, you could almost Hitchhiker's Guide go, hitchhiker's guide style trip, fall up, and forget to fall back down and just fly off of the moon there. But there we go, Jebediah back on the rocket, and now it's time to fly. And we're not flying home. We're actually flying for a moon encounter. But once again, it does not take a lot of fuel to push off or get back into orbit here. It takes just a little bit of delta V. So while it looks like my fuel situation isn't awesome, to be honest, this may not be enough fuel by itself to get away from the moon. Here with Minmus, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So Jeb, super happy. I would be too. This is this is making history right here, folks. The first Kerbal on Minmus, at least the first one to plant a flag as we get the nice moon and Kerbin rising. So I go ahead and create my moon encounter there, which if you want to see a little bit more about that, let me know. It's not too bad. You just got to play with the maneuver nodes a bit and fly off there. But the next thing that I'm doing is just flying to the moon. As you can see, I got an encounter pretty quickly, pretty simply. And we're just going to fly, fly, fly. As my focus is still on Minmus, now it's on the moon. It's going to take some dear sweet time. But I believe all Kerbals are required to pack snacks. So we get a moon encounter. And this is not exactly what I'm used to seeing. I'm not used to seeing Kerbin 
from this perspective. So it's pretty neat to me as we actually do kind of have a gravity swoop already there, which is pretty interesting, but getting a low orbit, not so bad. And like I said before, the moon does have different regions. Minmus doesn't, other planets don't, but the moon and Kerbal, at least right now, and I keep saying Kerbal, that's technically the name of the sun. Kerbin, the planet, has different regions, and that means if you EVA over different areas, you can get different results. You can get different soil samples from different areas, and that's something Squad has said that they want to actually add in later, so that's going to be the goal there. But for now, I just circularize my orbit. This isn't something I necessarily have to do. And you can see just how much delta V it takes me to do this, 46. But I do want to try and get some stuff around different regions. I don't have a ton of experiments, but right now we're on the dark side of the moon, and I'm sorry if the video quality is kind of sketchy right now. But just a quick retrograde burn as we cross the moon's path and get back to possibly flying to the home world eventually. I just want to bring my orbit lower in part just to make sure that there's not some low mooner things that I can get. So there's the moon, nice and simple. It's on the same orbital plane as Kerbin, so Kerbin's going to pop up quite regularly. But there we go. There wasn't. There ended up not being much in the way of science for the low orbit, at least as low as I was going. So now, how am I going to land here? Actually, I'm going to do a very aggressive aero capture. Very, very aggressive. And part of my goal here, I know I'm going to be going really fast into this place, but I want to be able to land on land. Mainly because I want to keep my science experiments. They tend to get destroyed in the water. I don't have parts that will let me float in the water. I think those are mostly not stock. But this is going to be a nighttime landing, so sorry for those of you who are hoping for a nice daylight sunshine. But at least we will get... Is Jeb going to do an EVA report while on fire? No. I did try that in a test run in another thing one time, and Jeb just flew straight off. So we're not going to kill this brave, brave pilot. But there we go. Very aggressive. I jump into the atmosphere. I'm not actually doing a skip uh, aero capture, which would be going back up into the upper atmosphere after landing. I just do a straight up push into there as hard as possible. Technically, the G-forces could be crushing and the uh, heat wells, at least on what I have here, could be really damaging to my ship, but those are not in there yet. So instead, we're just going to fall just a little bit and the parachutes land. It's all pretty good. I know we're doing a little bit of time acceleration here. But there we go. I have just managed with Jebediah to land on a planet, bring back home plenty of experiments if I can just land here. And you can see I'm trying to slow down my momentum. I did not put enough parachutes. I have problems. If I put too many parachutes, the ship flies apart. But if I don't put on enough, I got to use fuel here. And look at how much fuel I have left. By going into that extra orbit from the moon, look at that. We're at zero, zero. So, oh no, I'm back to 6.4. That's way too hard. Legs break, I fall, and explosion, because it's not Kerbal Space Program without explosions. But my experiments survive, and unfortunately I can't EVA. But there are some stats, and more importantly, 700 science total. 550 on that mission, not bad at all. Now, is it possible for me or other people? I'm sure you can look on YouTube to see how you can get ridiculous science early. But, I mean, this is kind of the way we're doing it here. I'm going to get science as it comes. I have a few more missions in the Kerbin system that I want to do before moving on. But you can see the different activities, the different experiments that I've brought back help. And there's other ones that I can unlock as well, such as the temperature gauge, such as the air pressure gauge. But for now, going to the tech tree, going to expand on some key techs here. I can actually grab ladders, which is interesting, or a thermometer, which is pretty useful. But right now, there's some other things that I really, really, really want at this point. One is fuel lines, which you can get from fuel systems, and the other one is solar panels. Solar panels are so key here because now I have something to recharge batteries. I'm going to have to slap a lot on there at first. But otherwise, uh, what's going on here? I have 600 signs, and you're going to see a lot of unlocks here in the low tree. Like, I do want ladders here, and this is a lot of ladders, and a barometric pressure, which is more science that I could potentially earn. Although I do learn later that you can't measure air pressure in a vacuum, so you don't get to do all the experiments in space. But there we go. I could go all the way over here. This is starting to get into rover parts, which you've seen me fail with rovers previously. But otherwise, just got to start unlocking other parts of the tree here. I do have plenty of spare science left. Please tell me I don't forget to do the fuel lines here. This is a post-commentary, if that wasn't plainly obvious. But I do want a probe core because I do want to send out some probes. And actually, the advanced flight control... It's pretty nice because it gives me some better winglets and a SAS module. 
Uh, also, fuel systems is very important because it gives you RCS, which is going to be key down the road for plenty of missions, including docking or just fine controls in general. So there we go. I do have plenty of tech points to spare and just going to be finishing up the tech tree here. But that's going to be it for now. This is Way to Fail with Kerbal Space Program Career Mode, where we're progressing. And next time, I want to send just some basic test orbiters around and see if I can do a moon landing as well. So next episode is going to be a combined mission using some of the great parts that I've been able to somehow engineer from going to different planets and spaces. But hey, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Just doing some final finagling on the tech tree. If you got any questions or need some general advice for Kerbal Space Program, you're welcome to ask here. There's plenty of great resources online. My progress is definitely built on the shoulders of others. But there we go. We have some grayed out parts of the tech tree, so I'm going to have to add to that later. But that's it for now. See you next time.